Hello. Through this video, let us make an attempt to understand FMEA. One very important tool used within and outside Six Sigma projects is FMEA or failure mode and effect analysis. FMEA or failure mode and effect analysis is a structured, proactive approach to identify ways in which a process can fail to meet the critical customer requirements and estimate risk of specific causes with regard to these failures. Evaluate the current control plan for preventing these failures from occurring and prioritize actions that should be taken to improve the process. The benefits associated with FMEA are pretty simple. It will help you improve the quality, reliability, and safety of your products, which in turn will increase customer satisfaction and reduce product development timing and cost. And it shall help document and track action taken to reduce the risk associated. Identify ways the product or process can fail, then plan to prevent these failures. That is what the FMEA is intended to do. Let's understand some common terms and their definitions as used in FMEA. First, failure mode. Failure mode is about the manner in which a part or the process can fail to meet its specification, usually associated with defect or non-conformance causes or a deficiency that results in a failure mode. Causes are sources of variability associated with the key process input variable. And the effect, impact on customer if the failure is not prevented or corrected. Customer can be downstream or the ultimate customer. The failure mode can be thought of as in-process defect, whereas an effect is the impact on the customer requirement. This is how a typical FMEA sheet would look like. You would have process step, the potential failure mode, the potential failure effects, the severity associated with it, the potential causes for the failure mode, occurrence, list of the current controls, detection, the RPN scores which are calculated basis, severity, occurrence and detection, recommended actions and the responsibility. Who is responsible for the recommended action is what, what is to be listed. Then you would list down the actions taken against these responsibilities and recalculate the severity, occurrence and detection numbers. And obviously the RPN as well. You must know your risk and proactively manage it. Use FMEA as a checklist The calculations in FMEA. The risk rating in FMEA document is based on three things, severity, occurrence, and detectability. Severity is a measure of how significant is the impact of the effect to the customer, internal or external. Occurrence, which is a measure of likelihood of the cause of the failure mode to occur. And detectability is how likely will the failure escape detection if it occurs. Risk rating is a numerical calculation of the relative risk of a particular failure mode. The number is used to place priority on which item need additional quality planning. Risk priority number or RPN as it is called is nothing but severity into occurrence into detection. Now let's understand how do we build the FMEA. In the preparation stage, start with selecting the process team. Develop the process map and identify the process steps. List down the process outputs to satisfy internal and external customer requirement. List 
key process inputs for each process step. Define matrix relating product output to process variables and rank inputs according to their importance. Once all of it is done, start with the FMEA process. List ways in which the process inputs can vary and identify associated failure modes and effects. List other causes, sources of variability and associated failure modes and effects. Assign severity, occurrence and detection rating to each of these causes. Calculate your RPN or your risk priority number for each potential failure mode scenario. Now determine recommended actions to reduce the risk priority numbers. Establish time frames for corrective action. Create waterfall graph to forecast risk reduction. Take the appropriate action. Recalculate all RPN and put the controls that you've identified in place. This is a sample FMA rating chart. So if I am calling someone as a severity one, I essentially mean that customer will not notice the adverse effect or the degree of severity associated with that failure is insignificant. While a severity 10 is when the customer is endangered due to adverse effect on safe system performance without warning before failure or violation of government regulation. If the likelihood of occurrence of a particular failure mode is remote, I am calling it 1 on a rating scale of 1 to 10. While on a 10, I am assured of failure based on the warranty data or significant testing that I have done. The detection scale, 10 would mean absolutely certain that the current controls will not detect. And 1 will mean sure that the potential failure will be found or prevented before reaching the next customer. So while you set out to make a FMEA, you will have to create a grid of this sort to identify and appraise all participants about the meaning of the severity occurrence and detection rating scales. This sample sheet could, could be great help. Now let's try and understand the who, what, when and how of the FMEA. To the question, who prepares a FMEA? FMEA is a team approach. A team approach to preparing a FMEA is always recommended. The responsible system or the product leads the FMEA team. The responsible design is expected to involve representatives from all effective activities. Team members should include design, manufacturing, assembly, quality, reliability, service, purchasing, testing, supplier, and other subject matter experts as appropriate. What is failure mode and effect analysis? It will help you identify ways the product of the process can fail, help you plan to prevent those failures. And there are three different kinds of FMAs that are made. One referred to as system FMEA. System FMEA is used to analyze systems and subsystems in the early concept and design stages. It focuses on potential failure modes associated with functions of a system caused by a design. The second is the design FMEA, which is used to analyze products before they are released to production. And finally, the most popular is the process FMEA, which is used to analyze manufacturing or assembly or transactional processes. In typical BPO environment, the process FMEA is the most useful. When is the FMEA started? FMEA can be started when new systems, products or processes are being designed, or when existing designs or processes are being changed, or when carryover designs or processes will be used in newer applications or newer environments, or after completing a problem-solving study to prevent recurrence of a problem, or for a system FMEA, after system functions are defined, but before specific hardware is selected, for a design FMEA, after product functions are defined, but before the design is released to the manufacturing environment, 
or for the process FMEA when preliminary drawing of the products are available. How does the FMEA work? FMEA will help identify potential failure modes and rate the severity of their effects, evaluate objectively the probability of occurrence of causes and the ability to detect the cause when it occurs, rank order potential product and process deficiencies, focus on eliminating products and process concerns and help prevent problems from occurring. Hope this simple video helps you understand the FMEA tool. Thank you.